the fate of his ex-teammate in his hands and potentially crush it like a bug. Ah. So let's find out how that's going to go down. Hugo, I'm going to come to you. Do you want to kind of set the scene for me here? Yeah, the voodoo doll of Asian CS. We'll see who gets crushed today. I think it's especially hard for Renegades right now as, as the desk have set up. You know, usually this is the game to be going through in first seed, Harry. Usually both these teams are locking for the region, but it shows it's a sign of the times when we have you know so many more rosters, so many more regions. The first Mongolians at a major as well. Uh, it's a really cool time to be a CS fan. So got to get with the times here. Tai Lu bringing Buntet back in. And we saw their Inferno yesterday. It was terrifying, Harry. It was scary. And Dan King popped off. So Renegades are going to need to put a stop to it. We already saw the, the pain of, you know, knocking Tai Lu down to that lower bracket. LFO had to receive a bit of a beating there. It felt inevitable. Triple B stack. Let's see if Tyler can take down some other Aussies right now. The read is good. They're walking through apartments. Sicko's on the bout, but with Liaz in the pit, even if they get that pick, it may be discounted. We'll see if Tyler have this flash set up in middle. It's on Bentet. And Tyler at the minute mark are ready to go. Yeah, but a util getting lobbed in, right? Smoke on the hay cart to try Ooh. and give you the angle, and they do at least trade that kill out onto a balcony. Liaz down here in the pit, really gonna have to oh, oh. step up massively, and instead he's just overwhelmed right away. Slowly runs him down, and the A bomb site has now been overran by Tai Lu. Dan King. Definitely someone to keep an eye on in this matchup, right? He's been kind of this uh, this top performer for the Tai Lu squad. Want to see if he can replicate that today. Alistair up the short side trying to move in for the retake. Has dealt with Dan King up in the apartments. And so now Renegades maybe in with a chance. They flood the site. The kills are presented for Buntet. Him and slowly combine for a killer piece, and it's all left on to Inns. Graveyard player gonna peek out late, and he never even knew about a Kafka. So Tai Lu locked themselves in a pistol. Ooh, fighting from Vintet, we saw that as well. He just got loud after the pistol. Yeah, you know Tyler was so motivated to make this, right? This is going to be their, their, well, I say their best chance, their only chance. And, uh, you know, as good as Renegades are domestically, I think it was Katowice they came into with like a 10-event winning streak or something similar back in uh, Australia. Like, this is, a, this is a different beast. This is the player we've called the best Asian CS player in Counter-Strike Go and at times has been the best team as well in that region for so long, in fact, throughout multiple iterations. So... Very scary threat, our oh, Tai Lu. Renegades find out in that pistol. Tai Lu slow it down in no hurry in the second round. Don't want to get ecoed as Renegades have forced up Deagle Armor. Good grenade. That's just going to eat that. I think uh, a lot of our question mark is how's Dan King going to look when the bar was set yesterday? It was pretty high. Pro, uh, you know, I, I, I think that's underselling just how <laughs> if you saw just the game, how yeah. impressive he was for them the other day uh, in the game versus LFO. I mean, he was he was T side open and he had like a like a 16 3 start, I think, yeah. in the first 10 rounds, which is just unheard of. So, um, yeah, to say the bar is high right now for Dan King is, is almost understating it with how well he's been playing and also how, how important that's been to these Tai Lu victories, right? Bentet's kind of been more reliable to put up good numbers, whereas Dan King, strangely enough, has been the one with like the highest ceiling. Um, slowly out into top mid, going to open this one up. Much akin to how he began the pistol, just running them down. Nice. He has Deagle, oh. that's three. And suddenly it started to fall apart. Summer, 1v2, trying to get it back under control. Liaz has caused him a world of problems with his Deag. And nice. they run Summer down. It's winter now, it's cold. The Renegades come in on top and the force bite. Nets results right away. Yeah, their summer is our winter and vice versa, Harry. They flip the script. What a great play from Liaz. You don't see Deagle spam mowdowns anymore, not often at least. And I got a little worried after he tagged that first player, but the second man with full health swang, Liaz, he does it solo. 
And I liked how Renegades convert that round as well. They peel off the bomb. They wait till the time is against Summer. He knows he has to run for it. And as he tries to escape with the bomb, they just re-peak him, knowing that you know he's he's holding that S key. He's he's sprinting backwards, very hard to counter strafe there. So great round out of Renegades. They already get on the board early. When we saw Liaz make his uh, you know debut on land at Katowice in this team, he did look incredible, right? Obviously, Renegade's got some tough draws. They played in Tropic. That was a very difficult game. I remember on the on the map of Nuke, Renegades were just getting completely blown apart on their CT side. But Liaz did look like the one player who was you know par for the course. He was ready to play that level of CS. He'd had his time out in NA. He'd been in EU. So you know, bringing in that much needed experience for Renegades in a team that, as we've already said. Uh, are the best in their region and it's you know hasn't really been a debate so far so this is a this is a really cool addition and renegades find a force harry already this game getting spicy yeah a hundred percent man i mean you know you wouldn't want anything else dude i think the the map pool is uh pretty interesting for yeah. this one as well right the uh, the inferno vertigo. to open up then you know you got the vertigo coming through that that's the interesting one for me because <laughs> both teams have shown that they're that they're very very good on vertigo right they're both sitting on a hundred percent win rate right now so that's going to come to a close for one of them right, someone's got to lose that I think Renegades have kind of always had some pretty sound fundamentals there. Excited to see as well how the uh, the orb head to head between Alistair and Dan mm -hmm. King kicks off. You know he's going to have T side orping for Dan King. Yeah, and I mean normally you'd say, oh, that's pretty rough, but not here. I don't know. Like for this guy, he kind of set the precedent the other day yeah. that no, I'm able to do that. I'm able to T side orp. In fact, it might even be better than my CT orb somehow. Yeah, I, I like how we. It feels like even though Tyloo are still fitting in the the category of being this wild team and being crazy and full of aggression, they definitely were doing that yesterday. You know, we've already seen a little bit more. Metho um, the madness has been more methodical, more method to their madness. That's what I was trying to there go. There we go. Uh, you know, even even just running these slower mid rounds, especially on you know, anti ecos. Okay, I let them down there, but that's more of just a deagle spam. If they trade him with either of those players, they win the round. But uh, you know, we we saw signs of Tyloo trying to tighten ship and be more methodical on these T sides, and I like the look of that. I hope we get more of it. Especially when we, you know, look at a team like Renegades and we, you know, as the death said, hyped them up as this team has come into Europe and, you know, had experience and learnt and pracked locally against the best in the world. It's only going to improve your own style as well. Everyone says it. Come to Europe, learn a lot, lose a lot, go home, get better. Yeah, actually, no, that, that's, that's, Hugo, it's a really good point. I've got to say, even though... It, it, to echo your exact sentiment with how you open that, like even though Tyler Wah is still kind of the wildest team here, right? It's like they, there is a lot more structure to it and it is becoming more pretty, right? They're no longer the, the team that just does the wild thing every round, right? There is kind of a, a good bit of standardization to it with like some of the, the classic Tyloo flair on top. So it's not like completely dissolve the identity of this team, but it is more structured. It is kind of a little more European, you could even say with how they look to approach it. Yeah, I think, you know, it's to me, it's really sad as well that we didn't get Lim Vision at this event, uh, especially now that LFO went 0-4, right? Obviously, cool to see them back here in EU. Probably pretty rough just going home, coming back here a few days later. Imagine they're still jet-lagged and they're already going back. That one hurts. But for Lim Vision, like, that's a team that have, a Chinese team that have been in EU for a while now. Mm. They've been out here since, you know, they, their debut at Blast and they've been bracking out in Serbia. We, we even saw them when we were there for Fun Spark. So, you know that I think that team would have been really excited to see that head-to-head -head between them and Tyloo, see the the effect of you know two three months of EU boot camp. Well, I mean, you, you saw the interview with with Buntet here for Tyloo, yeah. where he said like the plan with this team is to spend more time in Europe awesome. than we do in Asia, which is sick. Like that was never the, really the case for Tyloo. They'd come over, they'd boot camp a bit, but Asian CS really is healing. We have so many of those teams. We have Mongolian teams here. We have you know a, uh, Chinese teams here. Like so many teams are making the the run over to EU and. I I think that's only going to be good in the long run. Long Speaking run. of long run, look at this, Hugo. <laughs> They're running up long. Woo! Oh, 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 oh
Inside of the site, Liaz and Siko are going to wrestle no with time. the beasts of Tai Lu and lay them to rest very, very easily. It's a little bit of damage done, but ultimately Renegades are happy with how that one pans out. Three still kept alive, relatively clean. You deal with the long component in spite of a whiff spray here and there. And now you have that chance to just start converting the anti-eco rounds, right, Tai Lu? Mm. Going to have to just bite the bullet on this one. Even running these clocks down, okay, they're getting a little low in these last two A plays for Tyloo, um, but even running these clocks down shows that how they're, you know, they're playing more structured, they're playing more safe. Compare it to like a, a team where, who was it uh, against Case uh, that was just, uh, Isarus was just running out Monster in the first 20 seconds of every round for like 10 rounds in a row. Like that, you know, doesn't leave you much room for error there. You either win the round in the opening 10 seconds or you lose it. Tyloo at least giving themselves a little more room. But after getting four sport, you're going to be screwed money-wise. And Tyloo are receiving that short end of the stick. The Eagles out danking. Can't do it this time. Alistair knows what he's up to in Boiler. And Tyloo, they try and take mid. Flash peak. Alistair spots more. And he's trying to farm that ult money slowly from Rap. Deeks him out. But it's fine. It was the one SMG. Now the rifles can do the heavy lifting. And I mean, I even like this, like, you know, you don't really have a lot invested in this round. But what you're going to do is just kind of pump the brakes and you go, hopefully they, they get overzealous. People want eco kills, right? People want to pad those stats. Or maybe we catch yeah. someone going for a stat pad round. You won't and hats will just tear through you. But, you know, it was a neat idea. Renegade's up on a three. You know, the, it was kind of funny, actually, yesterday on this map, there was a moment where someone stopped Buntep from dying to a Molotov with a smoke. And in my head, that, like, made me celebrate. But only because of who it is. Like, the fact it was Buntep who got yeah. saved. It's like, back in, you know, if we... What if we language were, if, did he scream it, that Exactly, in? right? It's That's like, because if, if we went back, like, a few years ago, he would have just died in the Molotov, yeah. wouldn't he? Like, they just wouldn't have realized in time what was happening. Because it's always been weird with how this team communicates. But you kind of get the vibe that, like... Things are starting to work out. Things are starting to come together. Asia is healing, Harry. Oh, this is a quickie. They're taking top B, Alistair. His first orb, and he's put it to good use. Quick kill. Slowly, he's going to grab the AK and double back. Has been Tet's already opened up that A site. A pick through the smoke as well to Liaz. That one's going to hurt. Sicko on Rops. Waiting on top, they're going to run right low, and he's only going to go one for one. There's no one in the sight right now. Renegades, they hung on to that triple B for a while after spotting slowly take the weapon, and that gave a big gap for Tyloo to exploit after Liaz got picked. They've set up in their post plants. Two in the sight is not ideal, but they're playing over the top of the smoke, trying to fight this long player from Pit is Summer. He could get mollied. He's going to go deep and won't do a thing. He's very low. Hats, got to clear his close corners. In he runs, the wall bang, he won't be convinced. Slowly bails Bentet out, who peeks out next. And now everyone can try and take this fight together. It's a three on one. And Alistair, not getting out of here for free, will be able to get that orb. Tyloo just let him skirt on by, and they take a second in their gun round. Yeah, at least gets out with the AWP. That's something to go off of. But a nice little A-side execute. Sings it through to the very end for Ty Lu. Man, I, I, I know. Oh, dude, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna hold my hand up and admit to something here. I know that, like, with Buntet, it's meant to be like Bentet, but that feels so weird to me with my accent. I can never do it, Hugo. I can never do it. No, it just Harry, comes out naturally. As here, here's what I'll say. You're the one with the microphone, okay? You can yeah. say what you want. Well, no, yeah, but I don't want to, you know. Why well, bring it up then? <laughs> it's just... Hey, it's this, but I'm not going to do it. <laughs> but I, 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 here, I, here I am acknowledging. I, I just I'm default not to like doing it wrong because of the weird accent. So look, here's Dan King uh, opening. That was a really cool run boost. We saw that uh, start to make uh, make more meta at Kato when players like Simple were doing it, run boosting through the like deeper G2 smoke and try and take that alt fight. Did they he, throw Dan King was, spawn, like Dan King was Yeah, Dan King was ready for it, man. He was holding that play. God, the wall bang. I don't know how it doesn't kill Dan King. He's on five, six instead, but still a man up, our Ty Lu, and an orb low isn't the end of the world. Boosting up over the smoke. Oh, no, no, no. No one sees anything. And this crouch and slowly gets the drop on him. Knows there must be another man here. 
He does get dinked through the corner, but it's still going to be Tai Lu holding a nice advantage. It has had to make a decision there, and he goes for the safe option of two, keeping the B site alive, and it's actually forced to rotate as Tai Lu double back. Summer up in the apartments, creeping forward. Liaz on this little rotation, but they're both over at long. You know, one little moto smoke could cause them a world of problems here. So they're going to try and get ahead of it as those smokes come down. And they do run down slowly, but there's a lot more oh. bodies where that came oh, from. Okay. And Ben 10, there you go, even going to nail the closer. Yeah, I didn't know what was so hard. Say Ben 10. Ben 10. Yeah, he didn't say Ben 10. Ben 10. It's easy. Just say his name. And, you know, you have to say his name. Put some respect on it as well while you're there. man. Sick ben round. 10, what a guy. Yeah. He gets the wristwatch out. Danking was holding for that exact peak we just see. Waiting on the edge of the smoke. Can't pull that run boost. Cheeky idea for Renegades, but... <laughs> I didn't realize yeah, he got through his, through his teammate. teammate. That's funny. Nades down mid. It's a throwaway round for Renegades, and they will throw it away right down mid. Nice opener. Maybe there's something here to marvel at. Slowly helps out. Tanking wants the pistol kills, and he's here to deliver. Taka wraps the back of ult, and two kills on that round is very nice for Renegades. It's all you could ask for. Tyloo still get it under wraps, and now look to go into another gun round. How do you want to try and deal with this if you're the Renegades, you know? You, you tried your little innovative method to, to get the AWP pick down through mid, right? You tried using the G2 smoke coupled with the run boost, and Tai Lu was still ready for you. Instead, Alistair is going to be leaning B this time with the AWP, hoping that this can net him a chance at the opener. A lot of nades have gone over, but doing very oh. little damage. And so Alistair was able to hang around for a while, gets that tag onto slowly. Now, even looking to go back in, that was very close. Missed shot onto the man he tagged up earlier. I do like how much they're allowing Alistair to play these openers as well. He's hoping that Tyler is sloppy on their map control and that they're not flashing all the corners. If they don't, then he's going to be given a lot of chances for opening kills. He had one at B in the, the other gun round with his first AWP. Tyler still won it on A. And even the run boost is an example of that. Tapered off a little bit in B here. Tyloo are going to run through. Good flashes. Alistair sees nothing. They're already in the bomb site. Crossing pool. Hats could get wallbang, but he hasn't given up the aim of the game. Tyloo smoke it so they can chase down this orb. This is lovely. They're trying to get in Alistair's face. They're even planting in the smoke. Oh my god. Hats gets dropped on by, from Bentet and ends double up through the CT spawn smoke. Still, Tyloo have an orb in the post plant. Anything is possible. Yeah, attacker's not swinging either. They're going to have to come seeking. They're going to have to come find him and flush this guy out. Molly oh. will push him into the open, but he's still able to get one. Danking no going way. through. Hello. There's another man in CT that he just wasn't <laughs> ready for. Yeah. And so it all looks a little bit silly, obviously, in hindsight. But he's trying to get out there. He's trying to reposition and play around the bomb. Yeah. Only knew about the other man over at Ruins. Wasn't aware of the second CT player. And so... Renegades do manage to make the retake happen after all. Yeah. Considering that was a four on two, definitely had some likes on it to get interesting, I mean, right? In Dan King's head, the way he's calculating that is there's a one on three chance. There's, there's another player here. Either I'm getting late banana flanked and that smoke is a fake or it's double coffins or it's double CT and that, that's what happens. But, you know, nice try. He was smoked off a banana, so there was nowhere else to go. If he didn't pull his knife, maybe there was a, a chance at a second kill. Though. The trade swing never came in. Renegades get it done though on the retake. A very close round nonetheless. Alistair, not going to be starting with a pick, but he will be boosting his teammate up on the porch side and fighting. If Alistair gets blinded, Siku can turn back and help out. It's a nice setup. Renegades have you know, kept it fresh every round so far. Not letting Tyloo make a read yet. Tyler have moved away from their early B default and going to try and pop middle together. Flashes again, but this is exactly what Renegades are set up for. They trade it with the Molly, buying more time. They've done a good job of holding on to their util early, not fearful. Nice grenade. There's the pop. Sicko can turn back and he will find one. Liaz helps from long. The orb does fall and Sicko doesn't know where to shoot, but he will go back to safety.
Yeah, you dealt with their attempt at taking middle, and Tai Lu likely don't want to go back to it. Dan King still here with the bomb and this AWP scoped up on the short side while his teammates are leaning towards B now. They can lob some of this util in, right? They're hoping this is going to bait a bit of a rotation out of the Renegades. Dan King's actually coming back. Oh, this is all getting a little bit wild, yeah. a little bit weird, and we're approaching the end of the round. There's he went 20 to pick up seconds Utah. left. Now rejoining them over here in Banana, throwing the nades in towards B. CT player smoked in hats, but Ooh. he goes running through it. And even though Dan King is good for that kill, it's 6 HP on him. Up oh. close, going to get finished by the Famous. And so Renegades do respond to the B player, and they Ooh. respond well. Yeah, they respond loud. The hype's coming back the other way. See Alistair getting getting uh, shouty as well. I mean, Buntet set the precedent after winning that pistol round, so it's nice to see it going right back the other way from the Renegades. If you're just tuning in, this is the final game of the Asian RMR. This is the last spot remaining between Renegades and Tai Lu. Usually the lock-in teams to every region, but with IHC spicing it up this time from uh, Mongolia, from downtown. Only one of these two legendary Asian Oceanic teams can make it. Has time in there could have got pre-fired. That's one of like the the coolest things about IHC making it right is yeah. that like so often these two were just safe bet teams. You know, like it was you... boring. It was like yeah, yeah, you don't even need to watch it. You know what's going to happen. Yeah, Where and I this... think even at this event, I I don't think people expected that result. I didn't. No. They did. <laughs> when we spoke to Nine after the game, he was like, "Yeah, we were confident." I mean, everyone's going to say that, but hey, they've got proof in their pudding. It's delicious, as is this anti-eco. Renegades find a sixth, and they keep four up as well. Anti-ecos have been clean this game so far. Yeah, I'm very impressed with how they're being able to uh, to best Tai Loop pretty decisively in a lot of these rounds. All right, we kind of talk about the the endless amounts of of broad, of muscle on this uh, on this Tai Lu team. And right now, you know, none of them really finding the impact that's needed. It's actually slowly sat up top of the board, right? Definitely going to need a little bit more out of Bente or Dan King. Nades up into top middle, and they're running the way of the mid hold. It's yeah. very, very pacey All indeed. Right. right up long, oh. and into this double setup from Sicko. And Hats, Alistair's nailing shots on the short side. And even though they dealt with one player on the long component, there's still so many bodies over towards this side of the map. Attacker trying to clear apartments, but Alistair's already gone very, very deep here. And King holding middle, first shot connects. But so often the case, he's just not ready for the trade. And I mean, that's really been like the essence of so many of these Dan King rounds, right? In the moments where versus the other teams here, you know, the likes of LFO just the other day, he was able to go on these massive tears and very infrequently were the trades there. Whereas here, he's punished every time. He gets one with the AWP and then is immediately traded after the fact. Yeah, and then some of that is like the expectation of playing against sloppy teams and, and teams that don't have the fundamentals, right? You think, oh, one player per spot, but Renegades are not giving you that uh, that opening, that opportunity. They're really playing well right now on the CT side, trading off of each other. Even in that round, you know, okay, it falls apart early. If Tyler get kills, maybe it looks different, but... Renegades, um, sorry, Tyler was set up with four on A, fast up long, and then Danky was holding Banana for aggression. Renegades never gave that aggro. They just safe rotated, left a uh, solo B player as, you know, Tyler just get given nothing in that two on four. Renegades tighten it up and find another gun round. And as I said last time, Tyler have not really been able to accomplish much on these Ecos. This game flipped in round two. Felt like we were going to have the Tyler show, but... They got decode, and they've never been able to do it back. Oh, even taking this banana control now for Renegades. 
Yeah, they will actually taper off. And, you know, you, you know you're only up against pistols here. You don't need to take so many risks down the banana side. They're going to leave hats to just jump spot at the half wall, right? Play for that info, play for the early rotation. I like it. You know, it's good risk management out of Renegades. Like, very, very rarely are they in positions where, you know, one kill and suddenly the whole round falls apart like hats here. Yeah, you can get one deeg on the jump. <laughs> you can. That's like the you scariest might. part, but he just got the info. He saw Ooh. them, and now he knows they're coming. Going to drop this smoke with a clean little underhand. Look, there it is going in. And now he's bought time for the rotation. So literally, you know, m as minimal risk as you could have possibly undertaken in that spot there. And now you've got this double hold here and B in time. Resmoking. You know, if Tyler wait for that to fade, they're pushing with like 10 seconds oh, left. Oh. The spam hats. Oh, Tyler was sweating bullets right now. Gonna get the quad kill. And now on oh. for the ace. Hats manages it. What a round. There it is, baby. Lovely stuff. And yeah, no warning, nothing. Just shooting through smokes and was like, yeah, I'll just keep firing. They keep coming at me. Hats gets the ace on the anti-eco, and we just said the anti-ecos have been clean. Well, what an example of that. Eight to four now, and that's got to feel a little bit good. Nice eagle work as well. The bop to end it. No chance for Tai Lu. This gun round has to be something special, or they're about to get swept in this first map of the series. Danking has not been the Danking show today. His first couple of orbs looked good. It looked like there was a chance, but Renegades have run a very good CT side. Back up Banana, slowly being loud about it. Has to smoke his own Molotov. Renegades again, 3B. They've made the read. They've got a flash ready. He's going to go in. Hats wants to get aggressive. Tyler were tucked in tight, though. You won't see a thing. Mollied off. But when Tyler were mollying this, that's when you know it's a sign of the times. They're having trouble getting back up to car slowly. Given nothing, Renegades are triple fighting for this position. And Tyloo have often been caught off guard by these heavy setups. Dan King's going to work it, try and post on the corner. There's the off angle. Inns catches the first kill. And now, if Liaz swings, Dan King's ready, but they fight together. Nice entries, and it does come crumbling down. Dan King posted, and the double entry on top of it is all Tyloo ever wanted. They deal with that heavy setup. This is a fifth round. This is Renegade saving. Nothing they can do or say in this position. But that's fine. It was about time that Tyloo popped in B. It's what they were doing against LFO. They were really abusing this B bomb site, not just on Dust, but on Inferno as well. More so with executes than, than these contact plays. But, you know, when you get three kills in car, you just commit. Yeah, right. You don't get more of a, uh, a red carpet than that, right? So it's a bit of a response from Tai Lu here as we approach the end of this first half. And, you know, considering they could still go on this little berth up to seven, you're never willing to ride it off just yet. Finally putting a stop to Renegade's streak. Ooh. Sicko even chased down right at the end. You know, it's not the end of the world losing him there because you've got plenty of money. You can rebuy. You can have a player get dropped. I think one of them had a little less cash than the rest. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it, it's still a fairly expensive round. Uh, I'm going to need to take a look at the money when we get back in just to see if it's going to be a problem in round 15. You know, that, that could always be a bit of an issue. I guess it also depends what you're looking to invest. So it will just be yeah, saved up for Alistair. Gun dropped over to Sicko. And yeah, it, it can actually cause them a couple of issues here looking into round 15 if they lose this one now as a result of how expensive that last round became. Well, just win it then, lol. <laughs> It's got to be the uh, the mindset, the grind set. Renegades may have won the half, but they haven't won the war. Tai Lu. They have banana. They're even taking apps late as well. What options open in this round? Bombs resetting to old mid. Tai Lu planning off the bat to end A. Renegades have pre-rotated the AWP back. It fired off some long shots, and it's going to swap off. Drop some util on the way as well. Pre-scope for Alistair. Doesn't want this uh, orb to be known by Tyloo. 
Dan King's holding mid with his, but kind of taking it pretty easily so far. Molly's forced out from Renegades. They've got a good bit of util out off of that rotate player of ins. Now it's going to be back to this B pop. What Tyloo love, these executes. Smoke is fine. The timing's not too bad for Tyloo. They can afford to wait a few seconds. They can pop through it right at the end. They're not announcing this again. They're going for one smoke, one flash. In they go. Alistair getting run down. Hats doubles up. Everyone's blinded. The flash doesn't do Tyloo justice there. Even attacker gets mollied out while blind. Alistair oh, and Hats is doing it race. again. This is an eco. It's not supposed to go like this. But Danking trades. He's not going to get more than one. Renegades stop the B play, or rather Hats does solo. Yeah, man. Uh, that, that is just insane, isn't it? And, you know, the best thing about his team, Fortress, over towards that B-bomb site is Hats, dude. Look at him go. Popping off with the A1S. Love a bit of this guy. Oh, it's all so clean. And those are what they, that's what you need out of your B-anchor right there. Double-digit half on Ty Lu's map pick. Is that a possibility? Certainly could be. They went around. The economical woes aren't a problem. Bentet's cornered. Oh dear. Running low on, on ammo, but doesn't matter. Spams out slowly. Bentet tries to hound him down. It's, oh, just about gets caught. Bentet ready for more, but he won't trade hats. It's the AWP instead. D Danking has been the trade man. And because of how many triple Bs there have been, Tyloo don't commit off that kill. Danking was alone. He had no support to go forth, and so he has to give Renegades the respect. Play a weird 3v3 with everyone still split on this default. Tyloo can just group an exec, right? But I say exec, they've got one smoke, one flash. It's a Tyloo classic. Very bad smoke. Very bad smoke. And don't walk into that, Liaz. Because Dan King knows where you threw it from. Sicko's waltzing over as well. And Tyloo, this is just to get something at the end of the half to be proud of. Can they do it? If they manage to get in, this rotate of Alistair is so far away. Got to get past the double hold, though. And Dan King's gone back to watch Banana. That left just two players Ouch. to actually push on in. He was throwing the coffin smoke. Now trying to run down the defenders. Dan King all alone, late to the site. CT smoke starting to fade as well, but that's not where he needs to be worried about. He's getting wrapped up through Banana. Likely just going to let him have the plant. It doesn't have any implications on this situation yeah. for Renegades. Oh. The Banana flank is what they were hoping was going to save the day. Although Alistair's throwing out that nade. So now Dan King knows about Banana. Okay. Trying to thread this needle, trying to find the gap. He's seen the shadow, he's seen the man up close. Goes back and is sandwiched between the two. It's a good try. You could see him attempting to piece together that round, but it will get stolen away. That's just, again, a calm issue for Tai Lu, right? Like, they're ready to go. They're all set to pop B. And then Dan King runs back to throw a coffin smoke, like you said. You called it out. Like, the timing is just off. If he was going to do that, he had to do that earlier. His team were already running in. There's no trade potential. And that has been the problem for Tai Lu, right? When they've, like, triple entried, they've been fine. But when you don't do that, when, you, when you're struggling to even go one for one... Yeah, this is the result of it. Constantly I mean, left in clutches. Maybe he wins them yesterday, but this is not this is not yeah. yesterday. And, and you know that that is even like part of the whole kind of mental side of this is like flowing through your brain is all the highlights of how good you were yesterday. It's the same reason why, you know, folks like Rush the Observer can't can't play DM because he just says that like when he isn't when he isn't nailing shots like that in a real game suddenly he like gets in his head a bit yeah. you start to I'm, I'm not saying by the way that Danky's thinking that I'm just saying you know he's, he's remembering how good he was yesterday and how everything was flowing it was like mm. flow state for Ty Lu, and now it's gotten a bit ugly and they don't really have like that backbone you know that, that kind of fallback strategy going to what's comfortable what you know and love it was very much hinging on individuals and when those individuals aren't in the same state as they were yesterday yeah. This is awesome, though, for Renegades, right? In terms of the B-holes are looking really, really nasty. Hats with a 4K with an ace. Uh, you know, Alistair, he's just been hitting a couple of opening kills, not really needed to go crazy. Sicko's 18 and 8. Like, 
yeah, there's no problem right now for Renegades. T-Side Pistol is as good as it gets right now. Tyler are trapped into a very safe setup, a box in this A-bomb site, and Renegades are poised with the same pistol strat that Tyler ran to pop out apps. Yeah, one man down in the pit and then a double sight set up. It's not not terribly uncommon to see Tai Lu just concede this early mid fight and play back within A. But it does sometimes get very exploitable and it sometimes makes me a bit worried. This long play has given a lot of freedom in Sicko. Liaz even gets down into the pit. This double sight oh, hold dear. now getting oh, split wow. from two angles at once. And there's all that room that's afforded to Sicko over at long, coming back to haunt Tai Lu. Yeah, it's just a great read again. Like Renegades realize they have that room and they take it. You even you even called the long gap before it happened. And not only is all the attention to Tyloo on that apps pop as it should be, the bulk is coming through there. But Sicko just puts the knife in the back of Tyloo and some whiff shots is all that matters. Smoke on Buntet. Otherwise, nothing. He's already saving it. Slowly, he's kind of trapped in. To get exits and Sicko will make him exit from the round with a third P250 kill. He is ferocious right now, and Renegades have a reason to be uh, feeling good. This is their opponent's map pick. They want a pistol going into that second half, 10 round T uh, CT side. This is it. This is the Aussies coming in with quite an upset right now. They're yeah, very much rising to the occasion. Plus, you know, I mean, they're uh, they're going to be feeling nice and warm. That's you true. know, that's another thing. Yeah, uh, I, I thought last game would kind of like kill their mental. To be honest, they got wrecked. But yeah, it seems like it's done the opposite. You know, I think a part of you just goes like, look, we kind of need to prove to everyone that we are still legit. We need to prove that we can beat Tai Lu here. You know, it's our last chance to try and make it to the major. And they are at least delivering on that. Now, there's a force buy here for Tai Lu, including a Famous on Ben Pep. Want to see what he's able to do with it. Head right away at top banana. It's Slowly's Deagle to trade that out. Yeah, we know the Slowly Deagle can be devastating. But at what cost? Famous gone. Int could even take it. Although, why would he? Slowly has a gap. But he's going to have to move, and Renegades are about to execute. There's still three players on A for Tai Lu with mid smoked as well. Slowly getting aggressive. They're fiddling with nades, but he can't kill them. Finally converts hats. Won't follow up. If he gets two, maybe there's a chance. Instead, there's no kit. Renegades, a quick plant, can concede a round for Tai Lu. They're not convinced. They have to clear the corners first, but eventually Sika can get that stick in. Tai Lu double nade, and there wasn't even a tap. There wasn't even a fake. It's way too early. That won't do a thing. Sicker wasn't even in the bomb site. Oh, Inz is getting real risky with it here. Playing up close. He's being a little Ooh. scared. And yeah, that's going to give the freebie over to attacker. Sicko trying to push over towards CT. But there's two of them here. And he will respond with the double. Summer is blindsided by Liaz. And Sicko, uh, the savior of that round there, right? Gets it back under control with the CT push. To think that they had double nades for the plant and they don't wait for the plant just shocks me in that position. Like, why would you, why would you lob them out? Why wouldn't you just wait? You had the smoke down in CT. There was no hurry. Tyler just waste their their trap card there, Harry. More like Yugi No. Yeah, it's kind of weird though. I feel like you sometimes see those double nades like do exactly that. I'm gonna say you're like 60% to read, of the time, yeah. right? Because sometimes when you're rotating in and it's all scrambled, you're worried that like, oh, what if we miss the tap? What if we miss the plant? But well, yeah, did. <laughs> no, I'm I, I'm inclined to agree with you. You know, I've just. I'm jaded by it. I've seen so many of those. Uh, We're seeing mistakes out of Tai Lu. You have to draw attention yeah. to it. Like, Renegades are exploiting. Renegades are playing a really tight game. But there's, there's definitely been some some oof moments for Tai Lu in this map. Beautiful shooting for Inns. Both players committed in Banana and removed with ease. He's going to get that bomb back to A. And they're just winning their fights all over the map. It's Tai Lu, full eco. It's never going to be anything else as Renegades convert their pistol round just somewhere in the way of that. And, you know, I think it doesn't help when the two stars of the show in Bintet and Dan King have gone pretty quiet in a game like this. Yeah. Dan King's T-side wasn't effective. 
And so Renegades... We said a pistol might be enough. Well, now they can basically confirm it with a rifle round. Could even upgrade this MAC-10. Why bother at this point? But also the threat of the MAC might force uh, you know, helmets to be bought by Ty Lue, But he's gone for the AWP in the first gun round. I respect it. Renegades want to shut this down. They want to close it quick. Where are we sending that off? It's going to go banana bound. Util lobbed in from either side, although ultimately it's far more punishing from the Renegade. Slowly keeps his gun oh. out and does use it for a double. Helped out by Buntet. Alistair brings us back into a bit of a three on four. They're going to concede the space at Banana. Going to lean away from it. There is only two players for Tai Lu inside of this A bomb site. Renegades go now. They might even be able to catch this player crossing into the pit. Now, that timing has somewhat been missed. And a double pit setup is a nice way to, to two-man hold this site. Once again, it's going to leave you a bit of a gap over at long. And with how often Renegades have got this room, it wouldn't surprise me to see them exploit it. But they will just go back and double up on the short side. Molly on Alistair is pretty big. Sicko's got one as well. Oh, yeah. You can clear the pit with these Molotovs. Or but not. instead, they're taking them wide. They're going to lob it into backside. Ty Lu have played a double stack here before. They used the second one in big pit, so they learn about attacker. Question is now, are they ready for Summer alongside him? Yeah, even if Summer dies here, they'll think that's the player who smoked the molly. So, yeah, Sicko's in the bomb site. He's seen one player. Can he even get the plant? Maybe he could just try and stick it safe, forget about his teammates, deal with this threat later. 20 seconds, Summer getting aggressive. Could be nice. Attack has been cut down on a, uh, on a pit. Rotate as well gone. And this is falling apart of the seams for Ty Lu. Beautiful shooting from Alistair, posted up, and Tyloo feeling the burn, feeling the pressure. They try and get aggressive and stop that planter, and that just lets him walk into the scope. Alistair, his first extremely high-impact round, and that's not because he's been sleeping at the wheel. He is not needed to be a powerhouse in this game, but finally the T-side orb, best round yet of it. And 14 now for Renegades with an orb save for Dan King. Couldn't even play into what was Tyloo's most important round yet. And, you know, I mean, it's going to really suck for him because he was the third component leaning B at the start of this round, which, as we then end up seeing, ended up being like a bit of a misread on, on behalf of Tyloo, right? And when you essentially only have one proper rifle round to, to try and make your stand... That is the worst way for it to have gone. Like, you know, if, if you caught the game versus wow. LFO yesterday, you know Dan King was a menace with that AWP on the short side. You know, would oftentimes have the read on, like, apartments peaks. But he went be there. That's a judgment call. And it ended up being wrong. Yeah, this has just been a perfect game plan for Renegades all day. Literally nothing has gone wrong. To think that it started with a Tyloo pistol and Renegades won the force, like that's the that's the you know cherry on top for this matchup. Danky with the orb. Best gun right now, and all they've got to play with, he gets that pick. They try and run him down. Attack is dead. They know Danking's still here. Swinging wide. He wasn't convinced. He didn't clear it. And Hats has found the gap. Hats off to this man. He's running up long right now. It's only Summit in the site. Stuck in apps. A 1v1 perhaps. Liaz, does he clear the corner? Oh, no, he wasn't ready for that. Summer, though, they, they know about it. They know they've got him trapped. And Hats has opened this round Whoa. up with a double. He just saw this last man crossing out of the apartments. Alistair waits. Now, he does have the bomb on his back. He knows. Can't go down here. There we go. <laughs> That's a freebie. Summer falls. Rotations for Ty Lua. A ways out. Only Bentet here. Slowly all the way up. Banana is even paranoid about CT. Oh, this is... This is rough for yeah. Ty Lu and for Renegades. You know, this one's for APOC, mate. Wrecked yes. Dan King over on the short side, True. didn't they? Accomplished what LFO tried and failed at for so long. Bit of revenge for their fallen Aussie counterparts. And now for Slowly and Bentec grouping for short. Looking for a way back into the two on three. Yeah, creeping up. But 
one weapon trade won't save the day. Alistair hits his. And of course, this has got to be the save for Tet. Unless they feed him, and they might. Two kills. He has the kit. Uh, uh, Alistair, the bomb's not for him. He's tucked in it long. Camben Tet worked that one out. It seems like he doesn't know. Clearing every corner. Fake on the bomb. Alistair's run him down, and it doesn't matter. It's a round for Renegades. Alistair even gets the kill just for the style points. And that plant position alone just confuses Pentet, just melts his brain. Renegades, they do it again. 15 rounds off the back of a four on five as well. They've won so many disadvantaged rounds on T-Half. Even their first gun, he was a three on four into A. When Alistair popped off with three, he does it again here. And my goodness, Ty Lu just never woke up, never warmed up. They might have to rely on Vertigo, their opponent's map pick in this series. Running backwards, eating bullets, and spam will do it. That's a five on four for Renegades. They've never had the rounds this easy. I mean, Alistair's like bottled up all his orping yeah. prowess to use in this series now. You know, he's given us a great game. Hell of a T-side orp out of him. You know, he's the, I think, two 3k rounds now since bringing this AWP out, which is just unreal. You know, we were kind of praising Danking's T-AWP the other day. Well, Alistair's made his look just as deadly, if not even more so, kind of spearheading this 15-5 scoreline. Him, Corsico and Hats, I think definitely deserve honorable mentions as well. Sicko, incredible game. Hats' B-holds have been second to none in the first half. And now they might be about to run away with a 16-5. They're getting ready to exec B, nice. and with slowly dead, there is no one here to hold the site. It's a 3v5 retake for Tai Lu. Oh, and guess who hears literally all of this? Liaz sat in second mid, oh, no. maybe even about to Ooh. get a freebie. We'll just sail on past him. Yeah, Danking knows if he wants to actually win this round, he can't afford to get you know bogged down with Liaz in Altmid. He's just got to run for the B play. By that point, Liaz is already going to be there, just making sure there's no flank assures Renegades. The Tyloo are triple CT right now. This is it, folks. There is no coming back from this. Just the closing kills. Sicko gets his. Hat follows up, and he can't double, but Alistair trades, and it's apt that he closes 16 rounds for Renegades. That is a beating. That is a dominant win over Tai Lu in the first map of this series. And now we head to Renegade's pick of Vertigo. Harry, are we poised for a 2-0? Uh, we really could be, man. Like Inferno has been such a such a comfortable map for this Tai Lu squad, right? It, it's one that they're always able to push you to your limits on. And they get ruined there. They get bodied.